to be or not to be To free or not to free To crawl or not to crawl Fuck all those perfect people To sleep or not to sleep To creep or not to creep And some can't remember What others recall Fuck all those perfect people Sleepy eyes Waltzing through No, I'm not talking about you To stand or not to stand To plan or not to plan To stall or not to stall Fuck all those perfect people To drink or not to drink To think or not to think Some choose to dismember Your rise and your fall And fuck all those perfect people Sleepy eyes Walls and Well I'm not talking about you To sing or not to sing To swing or not to swing Hell, he fills up the silence Like a chalk on the wall Fuck all those perfect people To pray or not to pray To sway or not to sway Jesus died for something Or nothing at all Fuck all those perfect people It's the 17th of June and it's about 8 a.m. now. I was up at 5 a.m. this morning scrounging around to get my kit to come down for that sunset that you have probably just seen. And now I'm just heading back a little bit along the path to find somewhere that isn't noisy from the traffic on the motorway to creep or not to creep. welcome to podcast number 31 the first in the next series what others which is the subject of hermetic initiation sleepy eyes Talking about you mm-hmm. 
to stand or not to stand To plan or not to plan So this video is going to just be a brief introduction to the subject just in order to set the scene as it were so that you understand where I'm coming from and in order to help you understand uh, how best yourself to approach the way you think about what I'm about to explain. So the first thing I want to say is that we're talking here specifically about hermetic initiation. We're not talking about initiation into some Christian mystical um, sect or branch of Christianity. We're not talking about initiation from a Buddhist point of view or from a Shinto point of view, or yoga initiation. And, and more specifically, I'm not talking about initiation uh, from the point of view of the popular or mainstream Western Hermetic tradition. Because that concept, which I'm going to discuss in a little bit of detail in a minute, is far from the authentic concept of what hermetic initiation is about. In order to get our head around the idea of how we should be defining the concept of hermetic initiation, especially in the modern western sense from an authentic point of view, we have to go back and consider the origins of the Hermetic tradition itself. And any even partially educated student of Western Hermetism knows that tradition tells us that the Hermetic tradition began in ancient Egypt. And I think this is acceptable as a generalization because the ancient Egyptians themselves, when they were discussing the beginning of the, their Hermetic tradition, were probably really referring to a race and a culture of individuals that existed before what we would consider the modern uh, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian culture. So they were probably referring to that previous culture, that more ancient culture, as being Egyptian because they themselves lost um, record or awareness of what that previous culture was or they considered themselves to have been um, a subculture or an outgrowth of that original ancient tradition. But for the sake of simplicity we'll say here that it will be generally agreed that the origin of the Hermetic tradition is in ancient Egypt or in prehistoric Egypt and that it is said to have originated with an entity or individual that was originally referred to as Dejuti and later on as Thot and then by the Greek as Hermes and that's where we get the concept hermetic tradition because as far as western culture is concerned since about the time of the first crusade most of the knowledge that we have available to us today about the hermetic tradition came through the ancient Greeks who had invaded Egypt and recorded everything they could about Egyptian culture including the esoteric tradition in their own Hellenistic language um, and it was probably therefore easier for Western culture who used both Greek and Latin as a way of communicating written and um, intellectual concepts for them to understand the Greek literature on the subject of ancient Egypt. 
so in that way uh, we adopted a lot of Greek terminology and ideas as part of the early Western Hermetic tradition. The next important concept to grasp is what then was that early ancient Egyptian Hermetic tradition about? What was it interested in? And although we can easily say that magic, in the way that we would think about magic in modern times, like esoteric magic, and alchemy, laboratory alchemy, and probably theoretical and philosophic alchemy, while these things were part of the early ancient Egyptian Hermetic tradition, they were subservient to the primary concerns of that tradition which were quite obviously what is also referred to as the Osiri Osirian tradition or the Osirian cultus or the Osirian mythology and teaching which was all about the death and resurrection of the primary god and then this concept was translated onto the royal family as representatives of Osiris and his son Horus and then onto the high priest craft and then onto the aristocracy eventually where the death and resurrection of the ancient god Osiris was then recognized as the death and resurrection of the soul of the individual human being and this was considered to be the focus of the process of what we today call a cult or esoteric or hermetic initiation in other words the true core of the ancient hermetic tradition is a teaching and practice concerned with the death and resurrection of the individual or the individual soul more specifically and the ancient Egyptians looked at this process as being something that was being prepared for in physical life in other words there was a specific kind of training that the the king or the high priest or um, the aristocratic initiate would have to go through in order to prepare them for what would happen to them in the afterlife and what they uh, taught about that was that the soul was exalted into a higher realm of existence became one with Osiris who is the Lord of the afterlife and uh, lived eternally in the heavens so this is a key important concept if we were to have a conversation with an ancient Egyptian high priest or member of the royal family about what they saw initiation as this is how they would describe it they would describe it as a process of training that they went through in their physical life to prepare them for something that they expected to be happening once they were dead that would then change the outcome of their afterlife life or condition or situation in other words this process of initiation was designed to interfere or uh, negate or stop the reincarnation process to stop the person's soul coming back and constantly reincarnating but instead to change the soul in such a way that the cycle of reincarnation would stop and then the soul would be exalted into a higher state of being uh, to go to paradise or to uh, uh, go to heaven as the Christians would say and there live immortally as an exalted soul this concept is extremely important to keep in mind 
when considering what I'm talking about when I discuss the subject of Hermetic Initiation. When I discuss the subject of Hermetic Initiation, I am talking about a form of training that one enters into in physical life that prepares them for a change in conditions in the afterlife that will, as far as we can, guarantee that person, that initiate, a state of immortality existing at a higher level of existence than the average non-initiate human being would exist in. So I think it's now um, useful for me to explain a comparison between the idea that I've just described, that the ancient Egyptians considered initiation to be a training program in order to alter the outcome of the afterlife, and what is commonly, well the kind of ideas that are commonly considered to be initiation in the modern popular or mainstream level of Western occultism. Probably the most superficial definition of initiation in pop occultism is one that describes individuals simply reading books about the occult in order to learn ideas about things like astrology and magic and divination and ritual and then putting those ideas into practice in any way that they feel fit individually in order to uh, mix together and a kind of eclectic personal version of occult theory and practice and a lot of people consider the process of reading about the occult and learning what they can from those books to be a form of occult initiation and a lot of modern authors who write books for the popular level also present the concept of initiation in this way they want the average person to consider that buying books, reading about esoteric concepts, remembering those ideas and then possibly putting them into practice is a valid definition for initiation. Of course they want people to think that because they want to sell books and make a profit from it. So I consider that to be the most superficial level of a definition in popular Western occultism for the idea of initiation. Reading books, learning from them and then putting the stuff that you get out of those books into practice. <clears throat> and most people who look at that as being a form of initiation I would also consider to be people who believe in the idea that self-initiation is a valid concept. Something I do not believe in and which I will present my argument for and discuss in more detail in uh, coming podcasts in this series. So I think most people who see this reading, studying, practicing on your own idea as being initiation are people who are involved in occultism at the most superficial level. The next level up from that I would define as being people who join groups such as people who join the ancient and mystical order Rose Crucius or Armok as it is more commonly known or Builders of the Aditum B-O-T-A or even Freemasonry uh, but specifically Golden Dawn temples or groups or offshoots from the Golden Dawn system 
that focuses on the practice of magic. That most people who decide that they are going to join such a group and then go ahead and do it, make that decision to become part of an, a, a mainstream or popular level occult school, do so because they believe that those schools provide initiation into the mysteries, into the Western mystery tradition. And that these initiations in these groups primarily, usually revolve around group ritual, where the person who joins becomes a candidate for initiation and a team of officers who play the roles of the uh, officers in the initiation rituals, the so-called initiation rituals, then initiate the candidate by taking them through a, an esoteric drama. It's like a story. It's like going to see a play at a theatre that is divided into several acts. And each one of these acts is a degree of the initiation and tells a little bit more about the esoteric story that the particular group um, revolves around and at some point in the unfolding of that esoteric story the initiate reaches a point where ideally all the mechanics of that group ritual impacting on that person uh, the candidate uh, force that individual into a state of initiation or uh, trigger off or evolve a state of spiritual self-development. It's probably useful to listen to that little bit again in order to, to grasp what, what I've been saying there if you're not familiar with these kinds of schools and what they're involved in. That the rituals themselves that they practice ideally are performed by a team of trained officers who are supposed to be spiritually self-developed themselves. They're supposed to be people who have already gone through initiation and succeeded, and that they are using their magical knowledge and skills to impact the candidate and to initiate the candidate as well in the same way that they were trained. I would call the second type of uh, definition of initiation uh, the most serious form of uh, what is believed to be initiation at the popular level of modern Western occultism. And I say serious in that at least it has a kind of a concept that there is a plan, a mechanism, a form of training involved in the process of what they refer to as initiation. And if we study closely, for example, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn's process for effecting initiation in a candidate, their degree system that you go through stage after stage, if we study the theory behind how they believe their initiation works, it's bordering on being authentic. I don't believe it is authentic for a number of reasons, even though it is serious and it is an attempt at being, a good attempt at being authentic, I don't believe it is authentic and I will also explain the details of why I believe this in a future podcast. So for now let me simply say that the reason why I believe systems like Armorc, BOTA, the Golden Dawn, Freemasonry are not authentic forms of Western Hermetic initiation is because simply they do not work. If you find yourself in the company of advanced members of these groups and discuss the uh, concept of initiation and spiritual self-development with them, you will find in virtually every case, right up to the most advanced individuals in those systems, 
most of them will agree that after dedicating themselves to these training systems for many years, uh, all they have achieved in the end is accumulating a lot of information and knowledge and being involved in a lot of unusual kind of practices but that themselves as individuals they are no further along the road of personal spiritual self-development than they were when they first joined the organization and I can say this with confidence because I have met a large number of individuals who are in that very situation. That is to say that they have been members of these groups or a group or a, a number of them over a period of time. They've done a lot of study they've advanced to the higher or even highest levels of training in those schools or systems. Some of them have been officers and authorities in those systems and for the most part they all agree that after all those years of study that they have not achieved the kinds of things that they expected from being trained in a school like that when they first entered all those years ago as um, eager aspirants on the path to higher knowledge. So because of the situation I insist that what is claimed to be spiritual initiation in almost all of these groups in fact is not spiritual initiation because it does not provide that outcome in the end and that is not to say I should add a caveat here that that's not to say that some of these systems could never provide success in spiritual self-development but that the people who have taken over these systems over the years have lost the ability to deliver that outcome to students who join those systems. In other words, those schools and systems in popular Western occultism have become severely degraded to the point where all they're doing is repeating information and practices by rote without knowing how to make those practices and that knowledge effective. They've lost the keys to the mysteries. So again, this is what I refer to as the second level of organisations and to a certain degree individuals who believe that they are involved in initiatory practices but are not because at the end of the day the outcome shows that they have not achieved what the ancient hermetic tradition says needs to be achieved in order for initiation to be authentic. But they are more developed, they are one step up from those systems that simp those silly systems that simply believe that reading books and learning stuff from them and then putting that stuff into practice is somehow going to lead to success in personal spiritual self-development. The second tier systems are more technically advanced and for the most part they have a more advanced understanding of what real initiation should be achieving and the means of achieving those goals but they lack one thing that they're not being applied properly because the people who are presently involved in them do not understand those systems 
well enough to deliver them effectively. Then finally there are the third level or third tier of systems or schools or individuals who are presenting the concept of hermetic initiation and that third tier or level simply are the authentic stream of schools and individuals who know what they're doing the teachers have achieved that goal themselves so they know how to pass it on to students and that third tier of schools or systems is actually achieving the outcome that was originally defined by the ancient Egyptians or their precursors when they first laid out the plan for what initiation was supposed to be and what it was supposed to achieve. So I'm going to talk about each of these three levels in more detail over the course of these, this series of podcasts in order to make it easier for people to recognise when they're looking at any particular individual teaching or school or system among these three levels of study and training. Now there's one final thing I want to mention here that's important to understand uh, about my approach to the subject of what initiation is and that is that I firmly insist that initiation successful authentic initiation of any brand is a psychological process and I will regularly refer to the term and the concept esoteric psychology and the reason why I insist that any authentic training system of spiritual self-development has to be a form of esoteric psychology is because ultimately in order for initiation to work to be effective and authentic it is not just a process of learning information and putting that information into practice it is a process which involves changing the individual. In order to start off as a normal person approaching the process of initiation and eventually to end up what we in the Western Hermetic tradition call an addict and then a master The initiate cannot remain the same as they were when they started the training. The training itself has to have an impact on the individual and alter their behaviour, their understanding and the structure and function of their personal psychology. In order to become adept and eventually a master of the Hermetic tradition, the initiate must become something that is different from a normal human being. And that difference is not simply having learned a bunch of intellectual information from books, and putting that information into practice personally by yourself in isolation. The process that is required to be gone through during the journey of initiation is a process primarily 
which must alter and change the structure and the function of the initiate's psyche. What defines an adept and a master in comparison to an average person is that they have gone through a training process that has changed their mind. And it is that change in mind that puts them in a state of expanded awareness and in a state of awareness that allows them to see the world a different way and to behave towards the world in ways that allow them to achieve things that are beyond the grasp of the average individual. In order to end up in a state like that, in the state of an adept or the state of a master in the Hermetic tradition, you must become something that you were not before. Otherwise you're not adept and you have not achieved mastery. You're just the same person you were when you started out, but now you have a head full of information about unusual subjects. But that information and any practices that you got involved in without having gone through authentic training do not allow you to have an impact on the world or on your own life beyond the capabilities of any other average person. If you, all you're doing is learning from books that can be bought from any occult bookshop, that is not occultism. It is not occult initiation. Occultism is something which is hidden. It is a mystery to the average person. And it is still like that. Nothing has changed. We don't say today, oh, this is occult knowledge or occult training, but that now all of that stuff has become exposed and everybody can have access to it. And it's no longer really occultism. That is not true. The real process of initiation, the real techniques which must be applied in order to successfully gain spiritual emancipation, spiritual self-development are still a mystery. So in the course of this coming series of podcasts, I'm going to endeavour to explain in as much detail as I can why authentic hermetic initiation is still a mystery, how it maintains that condition and I'm going to explain in as much detail as I can what authentic initiation involves, how it is taught, how it is applied, how it is learned, the kind of conditions that are required for it to be effective and I'm going to talk a lot about the outcome of initiation which is something that is a little understood and I'm also going to talk about the kinds of techniques, ideas and practices that popular occultism has about this subject in order to contrast and compare the authentic process, the authentic tradition with what is believed to be authentic in the popular tradition but is not. So that's all for this podcast and I hope that served as a reasonable introduction to what will be coming. I'm surprised since it's about five degrees Celsius this morning that so many people are walking on the path here and it's getting to the point of being annoying now so there's probably enough footage for one podcast I'm sure that most people who watch these podcasts who have watched them up to this point and have been listening to my um, discussion about alchemy primarily 
um, will probably find the coming podcast more interesting and understandable because I think it is more common for people to be interested in the magical side of the tradition which is largely uh, what initiation concerns itself with. Nevertheless it was important and necessary to discuss the concepts of alchemy first because initiation is essentially an alchemical process. So all the ideas I've explained up to this point are a necessary introduction to be now able to discuss initiation in a way that it will be understood. Concepts and language having already been described. Again, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in podcast number 32. I haven't decided what the subject of that podcast is going to be yet, but it will have something to do with considering the earliest stages of understanding what initiation is about and how the approach to authentic initiation works in a practical way. To be or not to be To free or not to free To crawl or not to crawl Fuck all those perfect people To sleep or not to sleep To creep or not to creep And some can't remember What others recall Fuck all those perfect people Sleepy eyes Waltzing through No, I'm not talking about